Изказа много, че това се още и това се още няма да ставаме да ми напиме с файзър. But, let's change the closer. So, we are on YouTube, that's the most important thing in life. Tomorrow, we have our third written test, and I'll talk about that in a second. And we are following a Monday schedule. Oh, oh, I just knocked my head against the desk. Um, we're following a Monday schedule. So remember, um, tomorrow, go to your Monday classes, not your Thursday classes. Tomorrow is a Thursday for some intents and purposes. Today we're supposed to talk about recursive graphics, and I hope you've been reading. I know you guys are really keen on computer science, and you've been reading a lot all this time. Um, today is the fourth and not the third, so I'm not sure exactly why it says 3 May, but I am sure it's a mistake that I made, so just another one. Um, with re regards to the test tomorrow, um, I haven't kept up many things. So you know that I'm far behind, and I have um, terrible issues about being on time. But there's one thing that's been on this course web page from day one. Oh, please God, let it be there. Okay, and that is that uh, we're writing our test, our third written test. Yes! Yes! In your faces! So from the very first day, I knew that it was going to be a high, a I knew it was going to be a Thursday schedule, a Monday schedule tomorrow, and so the test will be in class time, in our regular class time, at 11. Here, in this room. So it'll be a apparently 45 minute test, not too long, um, just like the other two written tests. Uh, basically, we'll cover everything we could cover un until now in class. Uh, everything up to and including recursion. And in fact, recursion is just about um, the only thing we've done in addition. Is that true? Yeah, kind of maybe. Right. Let's have a quick look at the first door, please. Please, first door. Okay. Um, the previous written test. And I actually want to look at last year's test. Oh, I see. Comes up like this, but that's fine. Um, so this was last year's written test number two. So they wrote it. No, let's see when they wrote. They wrote the test. It was on 27 March. Wow, that's no, that was maybe a mistake on the test paper. This year I avoided that mistake, but committed a few others. Um, so the point is that um, last year, the second written test also included some recursion. And um, I'm trying to find the recursive routine. So I think the last question, no. Am I confused? I mean, that won't be the first time that I'm really confused. Let's see. Um, Oops. In one. Okay. So test three. Okay, perhaps it's this one that I'm thinking of. Test three. But I want a test that includes recursion. Um. Let's do that. Okay. <clears throat> so, here are uh, test questions from, from last year. Uh, what is the outcome of the final program? So, I don't think you haven't seen before. Uh, this program is manipulating arrays so that shift and as routine takes the array parameter of vowels and it manipulates it in some way. So that's not what we're looking for. So zeta log is um, not recursive, but this one, sacre bleu, is um, what is the output of the following program? Let's see if we can follow the recursion. 
software software. So it says set the blur and then this definition of the function f. Make it a little bigger. Function f. Okay? Uh, let's just see what the definition says, because maybe we can figure it out. If x is less, x is a parameter. If x is less than 3, return x. Okay, so f0 will be 0, f1 will be 1, f2 will be 2, f3, we don't know yet. It says else, if x mod 3, if x remains of 3, is 0, so it's a multiple of 3, then return the f of x divided by 3. So if x is exactly equal to 3, and I'm thinking this while I'm sitting there in the exam. But I'm panicking a little bit. My thoughts are a little more frantic. That's basically what I'm thinking to myself. If x is equal to 3, then x, 3 mod 3 is 0. It's a multiple of x. Of 3, sorry. And so I'm dividing 3 by 3, which gives me 1. And I'm calling f of 1, so that will return 1. So f of 3 is also equal to um, 1. Um, question 2. So I figured out that f of 0 is 0, f of 1 is 1 f of 2 is 2 because they're all smaller than 3 and f of 3 3 mod 3 is equal to 0 it's a multiple of itself so it's going to return f of 3 divided by 3 which is 1 so f of 1 which I know is equal to 1 and the same is true for f of 6 because again it's a multiple so that will be 6 mod 3 is 0, because it's multiple of 3. I can divide it evenly, there's no remainder. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so this is equal to f of... Yeah. I know and I know 9, same story. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Let's see what that is. 12 divided by 3. Um, last person, close the door. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door, please. Close the door. Thank you. Um, 12 is a multiple of 3. So x mod 3 will be equal to 0. And then I divide 12 by 3, it'll give me 4. So this will be equal to f of 4. But I don't know that yet. Fill in a few. Okay. Else. So if it's not a multiple of 3 and it's not smaller than 3, I return 1 plus f of x minus 2. So I subtract 2 from x, call f from that value, and add 1 to it. Let's write that down. So f of 4 will be 1 plus f of 2. Subtract 2 from 4, get 2. Call f for 2 and add 1. I know f of 2 is 2, so that will be 3. I can fill in down here, that will be 3. And that will be 1 plus 3, which I know f of 3 is 1, so that will be 2. Oh, that's interesting. So these values are not that predictable. 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 2. 1 plus f of 5, and f of 5 is 2, so that's 3 again. Wake up! And f is 3, oh. That actually looks quite random. These values are returned to different values of the x. Um, okay, fine, so we kind of know what the output is. In fact, this wasn't necessary at all. If it did have a nice pattern, we could say that um, Oh, we understand the function perfectly. It's simply square x, what have you. Uh, we can't really see a pattern, but at least we understand how f works. I mean, that's important. Now that the, the other person's phone has gone off, I'll just switch mine to silent as well.
Oh, kalau ini sih. Money gone from my bank account. Okay, right. So what? Oh my! Oh no! Look what they want. They actually want these values: f of 27, f of 28, f of 29. Because in the main routine, it's printing out those three values. That's fine. I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I can do. I can do this. Uh, let's get rid of all these open lines. Okay, f of 27. It's not smaller than three, but it is a multiple of three, so we know that's f of nine. Oh, we've calculated that. f of nine is one. f of 28. It's not smaller than three, not a multiple of three, so it's one plus f of 27. So, oh, 26. Okay, so that's one plus f of 26, not smaller than three, not a multiple of three, so it's one plus one plus f of 24. Okay, which is equal to 2 plus f of 24. Good. 24, not smaller than 3, but it is a multiple of 3, so this is 2 plus f of 8, which I know, and I know it's 3, it's 5. Okay, last one. 29, same story, 1 plus 27, but we've calculated that, that's simply 2. Um, do you all follow what I'm doing? In some sense, I'm similar to the computer. I'm going at a little higher level. If this was the first week, I would have said, okay, Java will start by executing the main um, statement. What is the main or the main function? How do you execute the main function? You execute the statements one by one. What's the first statement? System of how to print line. Okay, that's going to display something on the screen. It's calling the F27, so I need to go and jump up there, and go through the steps to a very low level. And we can go statement by statement. But basically, now that we know Java a little better and we're more comfortable, we can go a little faster, a little higher level. So I think the output of Sacre Bleu, Sacre Bleu is 1, 5, 2. Let's see if I'm correct. Will I get the marks? But hang on. Oh. Of course, it helps tremendously that I have the memo right here. I have to thank heavens. Are you over the other one? What's it? I know you're in the first one. <laughs> Just playing with you. Just kidding. Okie dokie, right. Now, um, this was not really the question I was looking for. These are not the drones I was looking for. Complete the code on the right. Write exactly one. So just watch what I'm doing. I'm writing the test, and first, my first action, which is controversial, but some teachers do suggest it, is actually read the question thoroughly. Right? Um, not just intuit. I know some of you are into crystals, and but um, but you can't just always get a vibe from the paper. So let's read the question. Complete the code on the right. Okay, so I'm going to write fill in some code. It's that kind of question. There is a code on the right, but I'm going to postpone looking at that. Write exactly one, exactly one statement or expression for each of the dot 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 r. Oh, so I'm going to write exactly one statement or expression. For each of these five, it seems like, one, two, three, four, five gaps of the dot, dot, dot lines that appear in the outline below. Well, it's to the right, but okay, I know below. The purpose of the code is to implement the recursive function. Oh my god, okay, bada bada ba. Looks complicated. I'll get back to that in a moment. Copy all of the code onto your answer sheet. Copy all of the code onto your answer sheet. Okie dokie. So I'm going to recopy all this code, but with dot, 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 filled in with one statement or expression each. Let's see here. The recursive function f of x is equal to x if x is less than 10. 
Oh, that's like this one up here when it says if x is less than three, you send back x. Okay, that's fine. F of 100 minus x plus one, if x is between 10 and 100, and f of x minus 100, if, okay. Okay, fine, we can do this. In fact, it's so trivial, I'm not gonna do it. It's really just fill in these things. If x is less than 10, return x. And it look exactly like um, f, almost. Not exactly, but almost. So this was a giveaway question. I'm sure that almost all the students got it right. Still, this is not the question paper I was looking for originally. Um, and I really want to find the one that I want. Oh, I know where it was. I know I saw it. And Okay, fine. Let's look at the prac for last year. Second prac. No, sorry. If I zoom in the wrong way, I'm not allowed to zoom. If I full screen the wrong way, I'm not allowed to zoom in. Oh, okay. So this question killed the students. We literally had to call ambulances and have some of them taken to hospital, seizures, you know, shock, all that kind of stuff. Heart complications. Um, so it says rewrite the program puzzle.java. Uh, there it is on the right. I can see it now. Shown on the right, good. Change method P so that it produces the same output. I've got to change the method P. Oh, I can see it here, P, okay, good. Change the method P so that it produces the same output for any positive value of X. I've got to change it, but it's supposed to produce the same output. Why? But does not use recursion at all, aha. So at the moment P is using recursion. Yes, it's calling itself at the end. And I've got to change it so that it still produces the same answer. I give it a five, it tends back some value. I give it a six, it tends back some value. I give it a 20, it tends back some value. Same output, but no recursion. So we're not allowed to use recursion at all. So first we have to figure out what is P doing, and then we have to figure out a way of doing that without recursion. In other words, oh, I'm going to say it again. It is not allowed to call itself as it does now. Do not add any other methods to the class. Hint, use a while loop. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. A while loop. Let's just see what P does. So if x is 0, it actually, it's a void method first, so it's not going to send back anything. I was wrong. It doesn't return some value. It produces output on the screen. So it must produce the same output for any value of x be given. If x is zero, system dot out dot print. Print, okay, zero. So it's not doing a print line, it's doing a print, got that. And if x is zero, it prints zero. Else, if x is one, print one. Okay, so for zero and one, it simply prints those numbers on the screen. What does it do for higher values of x? Else, call p for x divided by 2, okay, integer division, divide by 2, call p itself, and then call p again, but with x mod 2. We know that's going to be 0 or 1, because um, the remainder of the dividing by 2 is either 0, the numbers are even, and 2 divides them evenly. Or it's one, odd numbers. When I divide x by two, the remainder will be either zero or one. Because many have odd even numbers, even odd numbers. Okay, right. So a uh, little tricky, little tricky. Um, I'm supposed to do a while loop and produce the same output. And I'm not allowed to use recursion. Oh, let's just see what it actually does. I'm going to use my little technique of writing in my file. Do I still have my file? Yes. Okay. Okay. If I call P with zero, it's going to print zero. If I call P with one, it's going to print one. 
What happens if I call P with two? It's first going to repeat the same thing for P. It's going to call P1, because two divided by two is one. And then it's going to call P0, because two mod two is zero. So I'm not, I'm not sure how to write this, but I'm going to write P0, P1. And that'll produce a zero and one. Think about P3. It's going to first call P3 divided by 2. 2 goes into 3 once. And then it's going to call P1 because 3 mod 2 is 1. So that will print 1, 1. P4. Well, it's going to divide 4 by 2 and call P2. And then it's going to mod 4 by 2 and get a 0 and it will call P0. And we know that P2 calls P0 and P1, but in fact, we know that it produces 0 and 1, so we can just write that down like that. And P5, divide 5 by 2 is 2, mod 1, so that will do 2 and 1, and so on. That will be a 3 and a 0, and I know 3 produces 1, 1, 0, One. Okay, so um, we haven't done it yet. I'm saving it for next week, but saving it. We have to do it next week. So this is the binary representation of the decimal numbers. It's basically a representation of the decimal numbers you get from there. But you don't need to know that. In fact, it's better if you don't know it, because this question could have been different. Could have followed a different kind of pattern recursively, and you would have still had to convert it to a Y loop. Let's just take a bigger number and see what happens. Let's take P18. So, what is this going to do? It's going to do P9, and then it's going to do P0. And P9 is going to do P4, and then P1, because 9 divided by 2 is 4, 9 divided by 2 is 1, so it does a 4 and a 1. And then it still has to do, the, it first does that, which is that, and then it does the P0, which is that. And P4 we know is P2 and P0. And then it's P1 and P0. And we know that P2 actually does P0 and P1. So it does a lot of things. And then right at the end, it does P9 will do a lot of things. If I call P18, it first do P9, that will do crazy stuff. And then at the end, it does P0. Which will only print a zero and a one. But during this crazy stuff, that H will be transformed in different ways. So in some sense, I can, I'm going to kind of forget that I have to do P0 here. Somehow I have to remember that after while I'm doing P9 in my Y loop, about all that happens when P9 is finished in my Y loop, I still have to do P0. This program would have been so much easier if it had been different. <laughs> in fact, lots of, lots of questions in exams are like that. They're much easier if they're different. Uh, let's just see. So instead of doing x divided by 2, x mod 2, if this question had asked, first the mod and then the divide by 2, it would have been so much easier because we know that it'll either be 0 or 1. And we can do it immediately. So I would have written a while loop as follows. I would have said while x is not 0, p 
if x is 1, System that are the trend. Okay. There we go. So if the question asked P x mod 2, P x div 2, I could have written a while loop that first has the P 0, P, the P x mod 2. So this part is P of x mod 2. And then I keep on going. First, to keep it consistent. So there's a small bug in this program, but basically it's correct. This is a volume that keeps on going, carries on and carries on, and starts with some hex. It does the P mod X, that I make a big mistake. <laughs> I did. That's the P X mod 2 first, and then it does the P X goes 2. And it does that simply by dividing X mod 2. And I can do that because what is P X divided by 2? This, this is P of X. These instructions is B, of, is B of X. So what does B of X divided by 2 do? Well, it does this, except for X divided by 2. So I first do the X mod 2, then I divide X by 2, and I repeat this whole story. That's like going into the recursion. So I modify X and make it divided by 2, and then I repeat this while which is like going into the recursion. Except that at some point it stops. Unfortunately, there's a small bug. And the bug is that, um, let's say that x is 0 originally. What does this code do? Well, this while only executes if x is not 0. So for 0, this code will not do anything. It will stop immediately. And what will happen if x is 1? Well, if x is 1, well, it will execute. It'll... Actually, that'll work. Okay, fine. So 1 works. So soon. You just have to be extremely careful because um, this code can go wrong. This termination is not very nice. Um, originally, my code x terminated when x was 0 or 1. So it's probably best if I write that in my Y loop. Well, X is not zero and X is not equal to one. And now I've kind of broken it even more because now the Y loop won't even happen if X is one, is one either. And before it was broken because it would execute or repeat when X is zero. Now I won't execute if X is one either. But that makes sense, because the recursion doesn't happen if x is 0 or 1. If we look at the original routine, the original routine says, um, this is p. If x is 0, print a 0, do nothing else. If x is 1, print a 1 and do nothing else. So the original didn't recur either when x was 0 or 1. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. Um, I'm very happy with that. The while loop doesn't repeat it all for 0 and 1. 
And what I have to do is I've got to add those things explicitly, almost just like the original routine. So up here I'm going to say if x is 0, print 0. And if x is 1, print 1. <clears throat> So this line, that blue line, it's equivalent to this blue line, these blue lines. If x is 0, print 0. If x is 0, print 0. If x is 1, if x is 1. And otherwise, go into the recursion and recursively call x, p of x mod 2, p of x diff 2. And that's basically what I'm doing, oops, what I'm doing here inside my loop. Except that all this time I am still working on the assumption that if only the code looked like this, if only the question was this, do the mark first and then the depth. Because um, the other way around, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that to fix my solution. This simply won't work. Let's, let's say x is equal to 2. If x is 2, it will come in here, it's not 0 or 1. Is x not 0 and not 1? Yes, it is. Divide x by 2. Okay, now 2 divided by 2 is 1, so x is 1, now x is 1. It will bring the 1, it will go up here, and it will stop immediately. So for x equal to 2, this will produce a single 1. But we know, we can see, that for p2 it's supposed to print 0, 1. And it will be broken for other patterns as well. In fact, it will be broken for all patterns. Okay. Let's see if we can fix it. Yes. It should print 0 or 1. Binary 2 is 1, 0. It is, it is, it is, it is. But there's a trick to this binary representation. That is, it's actually the reverse of the binary representation. Do you agree? I mean, if you look at the top, uh, P5. 0, 1, 1. If you know binary, 0, 1, 1 means 3. That's not the... In fact, it's very broken because it, the reverse is 6. So it's... But did I make a mistake? Bottom line is that... It, so did I make a mistake? Yes, you just made a mistake. Okay. <laughs> um, was I a mistake saying that I made a mistake? No, like, this is not that philosophical. What's your mistake? Um, it's not supposed to be p of 0. It's supposed to be p of 1 and then 0. Because like, 2 divided by 2 is 1, not 0. Oh, man. This is a test. Firstly, you're not supposed to talk to me during the test. <laughs> and secondly, I don't have time for this crap. I've got to focus more. If I didn't have to talk to the whole rest of the class in your test, I could have been so much further and I could have focused on my work and concentrated. Let's just double check. There is some dispute about P5. Uh, so let's isolate it. P5, what does it do? Is 5 0? No. Is 5 1? No. So I'm going to call P of 5 div 2. How many times is 2 going to 5? Is that a P2? Correct. <coughs> okay. Yes, I'm going to do B2 first. Let's see what I'm not P2 wrong. I don't know. But you, you think I'm not P2 wrong? Yes. I definitely do. Okay, you're right. Let's see. P2. Is 2 0? Is 2 1? No. So I've got to do P of 1 and then 0. It looked a little rightish. Okay, it's right. 
Thank you very much. Um, and you, I take back what I said. It's not switching around the binary. It does seem to be easy to say that it will switch around the binary. But um, I think in the second paper for this test, I actually did switch them around. Now, let's get back to our story. This doesn't work. If I try to go B5, I get the wrong answer. I get the wrong answer. Um, it doesn't matter what I do, I can't fix this. I can't fix the solution because um, the first step in my why loop is to destroy X in some sense. It changes the value of X. And I kind of need the original value of X. Um, you change it to mod to zero or mod to one. There seems to be very little I can do to, um, to fix this. But one thing I can do is to not output anything, but to collect it in a string. So when I print, I print from the start. I print the first digit, and then whatever else I print will come next. Whatever else I'm going to come next, and will come next. <coughs> so I can actually use the idea that if I switch these around, actually, as they are now, wrong order, wrong order, as they are now, that would be the kind of reverse of what I want. So I can use that fact. I'm going to switch back. Put the piece in the reverse order, and it will now produce reverse binary. But I can use that fact by fixing print. Print always adds at the end, but I'm not going to print anymore. I'm going to collect in a string. So I have string x, but no, I can't call it x, can I? Let's call it z. I have string z. And it's going to connect what I wanted to print. And first, I'm just going to replace all the system dot output print with the regular way that it works. When I print a zero here, I'm printing it at the end of Z, at the end of my output. So Z becomes Z plus zero. Z becomes Z plus one. Same story here. Okay, there we go. So this is still wrong because I'm treating Z to do what print does, printing from the start to the end. But this code corresponds to this code, which is not what I'm asking the paper. This is actually a switch those two pieces that we run. It's going to print reverse binary. If I can reverse print, I will have found the solution. So I'm going to reverse print. I can't imagine that this makes a lot of sense. So instead of printing at the end of each net, it's not printing at the start. It's as if I'm printing backwards. Bizarrely, this works. Now I feel uh, I feel very dis I feel uncomfortable. I don't feel I've explained this clearly. Who feels that they understand this perfectly? Don't be shy. Okay. Who feel they understand this um, like seventy five percent, almost there? Okay. Fifty percent. I got half of it. Twenty five percent. One person, and zero percent. I don't even understand. <laughs> I don't know what word to say. No one is zero. Only. It was like twenty-five. <laughs> oh, 
Ça ne va pas. <laughs> OK, alors. Um, maybe this example was simply too difficult. I shouldn't have started with this. I didn't start with it. In fact, we started with a different question. We started with a question about um, in a test, in a written test. This was from the practical test. Speaking of practical tests, your practical tests are in the pipeline for being marked. They're kind of at the back at the moment of the little longish queue, not a long queue, a medium queue. Um, it's end of term, so lots of stuff are happening, is, is happening, and um, for some reason we also have very many foreign visitors this year. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, but it's on my to-do list. Um, let's try another question because that seemed quite difficult. If we get that in the test tomorrow, we kind of screw. If you get the other question that asks what is the output of what about, we could probably still make it. Uh, let's see if there are any more questions about recursion. Um, Test three. Well, let's get to test four. This was the exam last year. Test. Okay. I don't mind showing you this stuff. Um, okay. So this is the exam. What is the output of the following code fragment? Okay. There's lots of ints. There's do why do, which is a lot unusual. There are these continue and break statements. Do continue. Um, and they just print. So that's easy piece. We've done that a thousand times. What is the output of the following program? Oh, this is the same one as in the previous test. Modified a little bit. Uh, that's just asking about um, arrays, sending over arrays. What is the output of the following program? Uh oh, recursion. Class, I can see it. So there's a static method Q that calls itself, and there's a static method W that calls Q and calls itself under certain conditions. So I have to work really, really carefully. But this is not really difficult. By now, you should be able to do this. You should know that this is really just about working extremely carefully. And even um, Working out values that you don't necessarily think you will need. Just here in class, I made a big mistake. I mean, I would say that getting P2 wrong, which seems quite easy, is a kind of major mistake. And if this were the exam, I would not have done very well. Because everything would have been wrong after that. Even if I could figure out this whole story easily. I would have really struggled with the, um, with the answers if I got P2 wrong. I don't know how I would have caught that, unless someone in the test helped me. Um, so this is not difficult. We can do this by doing what we do in Java, and working through it step by step. But we have to work extremely carefully, because otherwise we are going to have an issue. We're going to have to make the same type of mistake. So um, I'm not even sure if I want to work through this. There are more important things. Let's just see if there are any more recursive, any more oops, questions. <gasps> oh, no, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. For a second, I thought that I would not switched on the desktop and that YouTube was showing this over and over and over and over, but it's not. I am showing my desktop. Um, we can do more questions about recursion. And in fact, I shall probably You're running out of bed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. How many do you use? What are you using it for? Okay, cool. Oh. 
Yeah. Right. Um, as I was saying, that um, I have no idea what I was saying. How is this bad thing to automatic? You know, at least half his class is drunk and the other half of sleep. I can't be bothered to listen to myself. I was saying that I was uh, really afraid that YouTube was broadcasting just a curse of the, of the talk. Um, I was planning to carry on with this stuff next week. We need to do as much recursion as we can, but there, are, there is one more thing that's uh, more important than recursion, and that is the project. So I've learned, I won't name names, but Reese told me that uh, loads of students are still struggling with the project. So we can't have that. What I propose is that we spend at least Friday during class um, answering any and all questions about the project. If there are no questions, I will ask some questions and answer them. Um, but then uh, I hope that Rhys and uh, Sean and Javon are going to organize another session. We went to that last session last week. Oh, lots of people. How was it? What was it? Hopefully. My sessions always have pizza. Not the class session, my other sessions. <laughs> and beer and stuff. Um, Reese, will still, Reese will tell us on Friday when the sessions are. Uh, they'll probably have to be pretty damn quick because the project is due next Thursday. But, uh, or maybe we'll even tell you tomorrow. We'll see. Um, what else? We can practice recursion for this, of course. I have to fit in one lecture on uh, data representation so we can learn binary, which is really important. And trial will be project. And yes. You are still confused with the dates. Adding in the project. Uh, did I fix it or did I not update it? Okay, this is still broken. In fact, Sean told me the weekend it's broken. It says 5 May, that's tomorrow. That is incorrect. It should say um, 9 May to 12 May. I'll fix it but as soon as I get back from the office. So you must have the story in next Thursday. The project must be in next Thursday on some level. Don't hand in your class files, don't hand in your Java files. Don't hand in any files except for one zip file. You must make one zip file that contains all your Java and all the other resources you need. No class files. Download, create a demo, compile on the command line, run from the command line. Yes. Uh, what time and where are you running that? Yeah, you only have, as I showed, Mysteriously, on the very first uh, page that I showed you, from the very start of this course, this page has said that we're writing, I predicted, long ago, I predicted that we'll be writing the test uh, tomorrow in this room at 11. Tomorrow is a Monday. A Monday, a Monday, a Monday. Tomorrow is a Monday. We have to follow the Monday schedule. We have class at 11 on Monday. You come here, all of you, write the test, you're very happy, everything up to the incursion. I have to stop now. Um, project questions on Friday. <laughs>